located quite close to this hotel. People uh, who worked with us in our office in Baghdad were very concerned that the potential that the looters would arrive at their houses. It appears there must be a, perhaps a, a commanding officer walking Yeah, there, there, there's think? a couple of uh, people in suits. It's, it's impossible to know what's going on. The Marines seem to be seeking advice or, or directions from someone there. Uh, quite, quite, in many ways, a bizarre scene, Nick. You've got uh, US Marines armed to the teeth with all manner of heavy weaponry uh, walking through in a, in a combat situation just surrounded by journalists. It's a very interesting moment, Michael. Remember, this is the Palestine Hotel, is where the journalists have been, and this was the location where every day Mohammed al Sahaf, the Minister of Information, would come out and put Iraq's view to the world every day. This was the first day that he didn't come out. Now we see the complete turning around of that, a very symbolic, if you will, very much symbolizing the true turn of events here, right in the center of the capital, right under the glare of live camera crews, very much a symbolic moment and a very uh, symbolic location for these troops to arrive in. Indeed. Let's just, uh, let's just take in some of the atmosphere for a moment. of great importance here in the center of Baghdad. A matter of only just a few minutes ago, 10 minutes or so, uh, uh, US vehicles in force rolling into this uh, area of Baghdad on the eastern side of the Tigris River. You've seen Abrams tank rolling by too. Uh, Nick, the, the notion that uh, the Republican Guard, or, or should I say the Special Republican Guard, that Fedayeen and Saddam have somehow melted away into the civilian population, obviously a major concern to these troops. And certainly we've seen from the pictures uh, already today of a lot of celebration, but celebration with weapons, some of the looting being carried out with people with weapons. So clearly uh, there are people out there who could pose a potential threat to uh, coalition forces, could pose a potential threat to uh, a, a new stability arriving in the city. Certainly that's going to be very much a cause for concern at this time and certainly uh, no cause for these soldiers to be letting down their guard, I would think, at this time. One wonders the future of that statue. Yes, yeah, barely a year old now. But representing a regime spanning more than 30 years, Michael. There must be, and you know people in, in Baghdad clearly, uh, there must be a lot of uncertainty among people here. The US and Britain are going to need to do a lot to convince people this is not an occupying force. And people will be watching for those moves, how the uh, United States and Great Britain handle the situation now. Very important, uh, a very important message that uh, people will read is who runs the country, how they run it, how quickly it's restored to Iraqi rule, how much Iraq is listened to in the early stages. These are going to be the, the, the key factors that people in the city are going to look for. Everyone's, this is a, a city that has been, that is, has a lot of very well educated people, very well educated people, very sophisticated, and they will certainly be able to read the nuances of how the United States, how Great Britain, how the United Nations uh, if and when it has a role in leading the country, how they do it, how they, how they make their decisions, how much they listen to the Iraqis. This, this, this is also a very difficult time for soldiers just operating in an urban environment like this where someone like that is walking down the street and yet must, by, from an American standpoint, be perceived as a potential threat. Certainly the people in the city over the last few days since the troops arrived in the city have been very well aware of the potential threat posed by uh, moving close to coalition forces. 
it would seem that, that perhaps the people we're looking at in the pictures here feel a little more emboldened. They feel perhaps that there's less of a threat posed by the forces at this time. We also have reports from Reuters that uh, the secret police headquarters in Baghdad have been taken by the U.S. Marines. Nick, is that nearby where we're looking? There are a number of different security locations uh, close to the uh, Palestine Hotel, but I, to be perfectly honest, Michael, I, I wouldn't know which building they're particularly referring to here. Right. Uh, Ruler Amin has uh, been with us throughout this day of developments in uh, Ruashid on the uh, Iraq-Jordanian border. Ruler, I don't know if you've been able to talk to anyone in the city in the last uh, hour or so as, as this has been unfolding. Well, I did actually. I just spoke to a reporter who, uh, 15 minutes ago, who said that he was roaming around town and just a neighborhood very close to where the Palestine Hotel is, they had sniper fire shot at them. They were very uh, close by. There were some U.S. tanks. However, there was also some sniper fire. And that explains the tense situation you're seeing here on the screen. You can tell the troops are coming into town, U.S. troops, U.S. tanks, in the heart of the Iraqi capital, Baghdad. However, they do know that it's not quite over yet. There may be some still determined elements among the Iraqi security forces, whether regular or irregular, who are still determined to inflict some kind of damage. That's why it's a very cautious advancement into the city. And you can tell that even residents in Baghdad, they do know that it's still tense, it's still dangerous. Very few people on those streets near the Palestine Hotel. And I'll tell you else, something else, Michael. These pictures we're watching now are almost on every Arab satellite channel. There will be so many people in the Arab world watching these pictures, astonished. And for many, this is going to be a sad day because they, most of them consider the U.S. forces as occupying forces, invading forces in the capital, Baghdad, a historical Arab capital. And this is very much will get to people's minds and hearts. Many of them, even those who oppose the Iraqi regime, had this wishful thinking that at least the Saddam Hussein and his troops will be able to put up a fight. They had no illusions that he can overcome U.S. forces. But they were hoping that there will be some kind of resistance. And they got some hope when they saw some resistance in Basra, in Nasiriya, in Umm al -Qasr. And so they were expecting that Baghdad would the siege around Baghdad, the battle for Baghdad would last longer. It happened so quickly, so easily, with minimum casualties, much less than they expected. And so they are very surprised, many of them stunned. This, this picture is going to really surprise many people in the Arab world. Michael? That's yeah, an interesting point, uh, Rula. Just, uh, this, this has all just unfolded in the last half hour or so. An entire armoured column of U.S. Marines. Uh, we've seen Abrams tanks, Bradley fighting vehicles, APCs, rolling right into the centre of Baghdad. Ruler points out some sniper fire uh, not all that long ago, which would certainly account for the vigilance of uh, the, the troops. Might be thinking their forces have, have won a victory here. That's not the way those people sitting at home in many Arab nations will be viewing these pictures. They certainly will be wondering, like many of the Iraqis, exactly what the United States intends to do and how it, inten how it intends to run Iraq, hand, hand the country back to the Iraqi people, how they, how they do it, which leaders they might push to the fore, what alliances they might uh, look, long-term alliances they might look uh, for Iraq to make within the region. The, uh, do you, Nick, see a, a, an alarm clock, as it were, for, for the US and Britain, who are clearly wanting to take the political lead here, uh, if not the humanitarian lead? Is, is there an alarm clock that ticks away six months, 12 months, before Arab nations are going to say it's no longer assistance it's it is occupation certainly there will be a time frame I think very much different people will have different time frames in their mind six months is a it, six months could be a, a very long period for many people it, it very much I think uh, the speed that it goes at is going to depend very much on how quickly the rest of the regime and any other resistance in any other parts of the country withers and dies and how quickly uh, there can be a consensus built within Iraq, within the many different 
uh, elements within Iraq, between the Shia community, the Sunni community, the Kurds, the Turkmen, uh, between the uh, different political views that may begin to come forward. Uh, President Saddam Hussein moved in his early days to put down communism. There are political groups within Iraq that just haven't been heard, haven't ever been able to grow and form and come forward with a common voice. So all these are going to be heard from, and I think uh, countries in the region will also look to see how that, how the Iraqis develop themselves and judge the United States, judge Great Britain um, in the light of how Iraqis do themselves as well. Some extraordinary images here as we see the armored column of U.S. Marines roll into central Baghdad and clearly taking control. Nick, uh, this building here, it seems to be media going in there. This is the uh, Sheraton Hotel, just across the road from the Palestine Hotel. Um, the, the media seem to be either following the troops in or the troops, uh, the Marines there following some of the media in. This is a general area where the U.S. Uh, uh, Marines were saying they were taking sniper fire just shortly before they fired on the Palestine Hotel. That's correct. They, uh, from that general direction, right across the river, that's an area of great concern to them. The, the uh, Sheraton and the Palestine, both quite tall buildings, both uh, dominant features on that side of the river, both having commanding views over the presidential palace area where those troops thought they were, tooking, uh, thought they were taking uh, fire from yesterday. A bit difficult to take cover as a, as a Marine when there's four photographers right in front of you. There, obviously, a little bit of frustration from one soldier there ordering the media to one side. Uh, very much. I mean, they recognise they obviously still have they still have a job to do there, and uh, they must be cautious about that. Must be cautious about that job, and obviously, such a, a, an important, symbolic, and in many ways historic moment. Even uh, a moment that all journalists there would want to capture. Mm. I know you're not uh, one of the generals, Nick, but uh, what would you see happening from here? A hold in place, uh, further forays? Uh, obviously, they're not going to go backwards from here. No, and um, if, one, if one expects the generals to continue in the same uh, vein as they have been doing so far, that is to maintain the momentum, to continue the pressure, although that pressure does seem to sort of burst the floodgates, if you will, at this point, but there may be pockets of resistance throughout the city. It's very likely they have a number of strategic locations that they believe would be important for securing uh, the city, for making it safe for the people who live there. Um, we now appear to be looking at live pictures. I think, believe these are live pictures from inside the lobby of the Palestine Hotel. Yes, they are from inside the Palestine Hotel. We're hearing commentary there from. Uh, one of the uh, Arab language networks broadcasting these pictures live. U.S. Marines inside the Palestine. The American Marines rolled into the deserted streets of an Iraqi capital that will never be the same again. Armed to the teeth and with little opposition, they began to take control. Word began to spread slowly. As the Marines moved deeper into the city, Iraqis began to shed the fear of decades. They used to chant for Saddam, now they're pledging their loyalty to George W. Bush. Very, very happy. Why are you very happy? And then the big push began. They thundered into Baghdad. The roaring sound of tank engines resounding around the city's streets. They drove past the government buildings that had been smashed by three weeks of airstrikes. As they did so, more and more Iraqis began to greet them. It was looking like a conquering army entering an open city. 
American armor is moving at will across whole swathes of Baghdad. This is just one of the main avenues they're plowing down. People have come out welcoming them, holding up V signs. This is an image taking place across the whole of the Iraqi capital today. They'd arrived and they wanted Iraq and the rest of the world to know. They came to our front door, the hotel where Western journalists had reported the war. More and more Iraqis were gathering to greet the Americans. For them, the darkness of the last 20 years under Saddam was crumbling. They wanted to bring it all to an end and tear down the statue of the dictator. At first, the Americans didn't get involved, but these pictures were being beamed live around the world, and they joined in. An American armored personnel carrier drove up to the statue to help bring it down. This is how regime change was going to be defined today. It was a breathtaking image. There it is. 55 years of hatred and rage as they jump up on the statue, trouncing it with anything. Oh, they're taking their shoes off, they're smashing it to pieces, they're paving their fists in the air. This was the moment that all the cruel years of Saddam Hussein was ended by the sheer rage of ordinary Iraqis. Whether he's dead or alive hardly seems relevant anymore. His rule and control has gone. The road into Baghdad from the west has been a story of skirmishes and ambushes. The military base had been in the middle of residential housing and there was shooting from the side streets. Also here, spotted a surface-to-air missile. And what we're house is that right. That's where the missile was. Local people were desperate to avoid the fighting. Then, about seven miles from the center, we drove up onto the main highway. This had been another line of defense. And here, an anti-aircraft gun was destroyed. Soon after, we saw some of those who clearly were not welcoming American forces. Moments later, there was an ambush from the rooftops. The attackers were few in numbers. This is what the war had become. Small teams of Iraqis with rifles and rocket-propelled grenades taking on the American army. The armored column pushed on into the city, taking another vast military complex close to a mosque. Scores of ammunition trucks appeared to have been abandoned, but then another attack. Four Iraqis were killed and a truck full of grenades destroyed. Soon after, a group of Iraqis with weapons was spotted close to where the American unit had stopped. Keep it low. These attacks were coming from soldiers who had thrown away their uniforms. Desperate acts on behalf of a doomed regime. After days of skirmishes, it doesn't yet appear here in West Baghdad that the war is over. All afternoon, these units have been facing groups firing rocket-propelled grenades at them. What they're hoping is that tomorrow, that the Iraqis on this side of the city will also abandon the fight. Gavin Hewitt, BBC News, Baghdad. Well, we waited a long time for these guys to turn up, and here they are, in the middle of Baghdad, not on the other side of the Tigris, but right here in the center. You guys have taken a long time to come. Where you been? Uh, huh? uh, you've been waiting a month for you to turn up. Oh. It's taken a little while, but we're here now. This for the Americans? I like Americans. Is that for the Americans? Yeah. Very, very big. Yeah, okay. <laughs> 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 
Here's a present for you from the man in the car. Can we uh, open the mosque to... Uh, Can the, you open the, the mosque? mosque uh, I don't think the Americans will stop you praying, oh, okay. please. Okay. Yes. yes. They wanted to know whether they could open their mosque and pray. I said, you weren't, you weren't going to stop that. That's yeah. How many miles? 300? So, I believe so. Well, well, welcome to Baghdad. Oh, thanks. <laughs> so, so this is what it looks like, huh? Yeah. Hi, we're from British TV. We've been waiting a month for you guys. Yeah, it's great to finally be here. It's great to finally be here. Huh? We're glad to be here helping out the people of Iraq, helping liberate Iraq. It feels good to come in here and see everyone waving to us, and uh, we're glad to do our job and be here and uh, help all these people out. Have you had much, uh, did you have much problem getting in? Uh, it's been a long road. It's been a long road. We started uh, right out of Kuwait, moved up through El Basra. It's been, uh, it's been quite a journey. Did you have much resistance coming in, or was it a fairly clean, uh, clean drive in? It was in? Uh, sporadic ambushes, amateur type attacks, nothing uh, organized military. There was no organized military that attacked us whatsoever. A lot of people surrendered that were regular military, a lot of rig religious fanatics are the ones that actually attacked us. We did see a lot of guns out there a few days ago, but they just went. Yeah, they left. We found a lot of their stash, stashes, their ammunition, their mortars, their RPGs, their tanks. They just got up and left, and we blew them up as we came up here. Down then. Are you happy to see this? I, I am very happy. I am very happy to see this. You've waited a long time. Yes, yes, yes. I, I wait a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot time. So much a lot time. Many years, eh? Many years, yes. We say, let's go to hell. That's Iraqi freedom now is gone. Now it's coming. Saddam's he's gone. That's now we are feel is very, very happy. But what we need, we just we don't need just the American coming. We need to repair Iraq. What will you say when that statue comes down? I know. I, I don't know to explain my feelings. I don't. I, I can't explain my feelings. I can't explain. I can't explain. It's very happy. Happy. Thank you. Thank you very much. Good luck. <laughs> and you look happy too. Yes, very, very, very happy. Very happy. What? Were you waving when the Americans came in? Yes, of course. I do. Say that again. Hello. <laughs> the experience of our happy. Well, the Iraqis having failed with their uh, rope noose, the Americans have now shown them how really to topple Saddam Hussein. It's now a quarter to seven on. Wednesday the 9th of April and well let's use that old cliche an historic day the five four three two one there it goes the end of Saddam Hussein one last pull Goodbye, Saddam. This really is the most astonishing. There it goes. There it goes. I don't understand a word of Arabic, but I think I know what they're saying. Death to Saddam, death to Saddam. Statue is down and now they're squashing it with their feet. Pounding it with their feet, pounding it with their hands. Death to Saddam, is that what you're saying? Good, good, huh? very good. good. Death to Saddam. Very good, yes, good Saddam. Yes, good, yes, good. What a moment. We've said this many times in our lives, haven't we, at moments like this, that there'll never be a day like this. Well, believe me, having covered the news for the last 40 years, I don't think I've ever seen anything quite like it. The death of Saddam Hussein symbolically toppled by the Americans at 10 minutes to 7. On Wednesday, the 9th of April, they've come in 350 miles from the south. Despite Saddam